All right, so in this problem, we are giving a beam with this cross section, and we want to find the normal stress acting on point A and point B. Now, as you can see, um, this is a prismatic beam, meaning the cross section along the beam is the same and the bending moment is acting on a, a, a plane of symmetry <clears throat> and the, this plane of symmetry is, ac uh, is acting along the x-axis or along the uh, length of the beam and this will be your y-axis now when bending happens we will, it will produce something called flexural stress or normal stress so here we will have stress acting in this direction along the x-axis and stress acting along this direction along the x-axis when this bending moment happens we will have this concaving up so this uh, uh, normal stress that is perpendicular to the cross section is pushing on the uh, cross section causing it for compression this is pulling the cross section which causing at the bottom to have tensile stress and it's perpendicular so that's called the normal stress all right uh, he, now we want to find the neutral axis neutral axis passes through the centroid of the cross section and the let's say that this is the centroid and this will be our neutral axis all right and you and the neutral axis is perpendicular to the plane of symmetry which is this one let me just clean it up a little bit right here right here so we we knew that this is plane of symmetry okay so this will be our our neutral axis what's happening is as we increase in the y direction the stress increase this will be the stress along the the normal stress along the x-axis <clears throat> and here we will have the normal stress pulling so this is causing compression this is causing tension and at the neutral axis the stress is zero all right so we want to find the neutral axis so let's now look at the cross section that we have <clears throat> in this cross section we can divide this into three shapes and let's give each shape its color let's go with green so shape number one shape number two Um, shape number three all right and as you can see these shapes are rectangle so we can go to different uh, you know reference tables 
uh, I got this from the FE reference table for a rectangle so we want to find so the the centroid is why okay so uh, before we move forward let's define our axis so this right here is our positive y here is negative y and when it goes through the centroid this is your z axis this is the axis of rotation along uh, into the page or out of the page is your x axis or the length of the beam and z will be your axis of rotation all right um so here h sub 2 is uh, the dimension is is 1.5 so that is approximately here so that will be your center all right so now we need to find the area more before we do that so we so what do we need to find we need to find the stresses right so the, the stress the normal the normal stress along the x-axis for point a is equal to the moment of inertia uh, I mean sorry the moment which is 25 kips times inch times y y is the distance from the z axis or the axis of rotation that goes through the centroid or the uh, neutral axis to point b or in our case to point a so that will be sub a divided by the moment of inertia for the whole cross uh, cross section and we need and same thing we, we need to find for b which will be the moment given will be the distance from the neutral axis or the axis of rotation to point b divided by the area moment of inertia for the whole cross section so for rectangle one it was so the rect rectan rectangle one it will be the area moment of inertia rectangle one will be one over 12 times base times height to the power three so area one will equal I mean sorry the area moment of inertia one will equal to <coughs> um, so this is the base is two inch times the height is 1.5 inch all to the power 3 divided by 12 all right so that's for rectangle 1 for uh, rectangle 2 which color it's magenta so let's put it here rectangle 2 it will be the same equation so we say i2 in this case the base will be 2 times um, the height will be 5.5 uh, 5.5 inch to the power 3 divided by 12 and the last one is rectangle 3 rectangle 3 
So I sub 3 equal to same equation, the base in this case is 2 times the height is 1.5. And divided by 12. So now we will find the cross, uh, the area moment of inertia for the whole cross section. So we will add 1 plus 2 plus 3. I equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. So you find these values. You plug it into the calculator, you add these values, and you should get that your I equal to 28.854 inch to the power 4. So now we found I. So the I is found. Y A. <clears throat> which is from the neutral axis to A and this distance will be uh, 2.75 inch which is from here to here so Y A is 2.75 inch okay Y B is from here to here this one which will be half of 1.5 which is 0.75 inch so that we found this we found this we are giving the moments all right now we are ready to find the stress and now let's all right so these the point B is in the positive y direction and point A is also in the positive y direction let's take this into consideration so this the normal stress along the x-axis acting on point A equal to, so here we are given this to be 25 kips, 25 kips to inch times, uh, at A we said that it's 2.75 inch divided by the 28 point eight five four inch to the power four that gives us what oh we forgot the minus sign very big mistake we did in here we forgot the minus sign All right so what does that tells tells us the answer will be negative that means it's compression and the answer in here will be two point three eight KSI. So the normal stress along the x axis for point B minus twenty five kips times inch times positive zero point seventy five because it's in the positive direction of the y direction divided by 28.854 inch to the power 4 here the answer is negative so that tells us that um, it is compression 0 0.650 KSI now as you can see the normal stress at B is smaller than A does that make sense yes it does because as you can see in here so from the neutral axis right here as this as the value of y increases which is this one the value of stress increase so the value of y for a is 2.75 while the value of y at point b is 0 0.75 so yes that does make sense and the neutral axis we is where the stress is zero thank you very much